What's your remarks, please? Uh, just really happy uh, to come away with a, a win. I think it's typical Missouri Valley type uh, basketball game, just a, a real slugfest. Uh, I don't think either team played particularly well, but I think both teams played really hard and had a high competitive level, uh, both ends of the floor. Um, and I felt good, like what I told the guys was, uh, when our offense wasn't good in the second half, when we weren't scoring, uh, missing shots or having a turnover, we kept guard, you know, and it, we it kept us uh, right in there close, and then we got the lead and kept the lead, uh, unlike the first half. So the second half, that was really the first time where we continued to defend even when we weren't scoring. And you have to do that. You have to do that. It's got to be your constant uh, first half. And we acted like you. We've never seen a zone before. And give Bradley credit. You know, if you can get Tyreek to be that passive, I, I've never seen him like that. So it was, it was a struggle there in the first half, and it really negatively affected our defense. But uh, guys gutted it out and uh, earned one tonight. It was a good win. Questions, Quincy? What do you think defines the mental toughness of this team? The first half when they went the zone, when they take about everything they wanted to do in the second well, half. Really I mean, that's both define us, you know, and that's where we got to change. You know, we got to change. It's got to be. It's got to be the second half. Uh, that's how we got to be from here on out. If you're the first, you're just going to lose. I mean, you're uh, you're not going to beat anybody good for sure, and you're not going to win on the road. And if we get lucky, uh, maybe win on the on at home, but. Uh, it's us. You know, we got to own it. We're, we're guilty of it, and, and we got to change it. And I thought our guys changed it in the second half. How do you feel like? What, what were you trying to get, instruct the team to do to attack the zone that they put out there? What, and what were they not doing to get that done? Well, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a different zone because they're they're three across up top. Um, we got a lot of threes. You know, your ten, your tendency is probably going to be to to get some open threes. We didn't make anything. Um, and you want to flood the paint, you want to attack the paint. They got two seven footers back there, so it's tough to finish. But we did not do a good job of getting ball to the paint and playing off. Uh, Jake did a much better job. We like Laravia getting it in there. He did a much better job in the second half. But Tyreek's got to want the ball in there. Christian Williams got because those guys are good playmakers. And for some reason, we were, and we, you know, we didn't work on it a ton. We didn't work on it a ton, but you, you figure those guys are going to be. Okay, and be more aggressive. We just got really, really passive. Was the ball rotating out to Tyreek enough? I noticed in the second half. Well, they, they, they stick on the. They other do side. what a lot of teams do when the ball goes to paint. They're not leaving him, you know. And a lot of times they don't leave JB. So it's three on three with the other guys. So the ball hits that paint. You'll see that a lot with everybody. They're not. They're staying out there with Tyreek. He's not going to get it. He's got to be a better cutter. Um, and those other guys just have to make plays. And we like our one-on-one -on -one matchups with with our two freshmen in their scoring. It seems like sometimes this team always seems prepared for plan A, which Bradley typically doesn't play so. Plan B trips them up at times. How does this team get better prepared for when a team switches things up, either offensively or defensively, to you know, avoid what happened? Yeah, I'm not so sure I agree with you on that because teams in our league are so good. They're, they're, they're not just one dimensional. You know? So you got to be ready. Uh, for a lot of different things. You talk about transition defense, keeping them off the glass, keeping the ball in front of you, ball screen defense. So that was just something like with their short numbers, I think, that they went to. He's playing some zone uh, regardless, so we knew it. But, uh, you know, it's stuff you want to be very prepared for. TP had them ready for, for the scout. Offensively, you know, we're usually better than what we've been the last couple games, so maybe we're going to really get it going. But uh, I'm not so sure I agree with that as much, but you have to be able to adjust um, to anything within a game, whether it be press, whether it be zone, whether it be uh, guarding a ball screen a different way. And, um, with our experienced guards, I usually like that. You know, we take what's usually an advantage for us. But a lot of times, shorthanded teams make it unpredictable. Oh, yeah. Or the teams are playing against. Uh, obviously, you guys had to switch some things up, or guys playing that you didn't expect to play, and combinations. And how difficult was that? And well, I, we faced it this year, too. You know, Todd writes about it, how we're, we're getting breaks. That, other people got uh, good players gone, then everybody else steps up. You know, Valpo, holy cow, the games of their lives from, from two or three of their guys that weren't getting the amount of minutes. And I thought the, the other guys were the other guys were terrific tonight for Brown. I, I thought they competed their tails off. And you know, Brown is, is as good as it gets in the league. So that's a that's a big loss. But that's what happens in this league, man. I mean, look at look at look at their bench with 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 two really good players, two starters, um, not being able to play for them. So. Uh, it's the next man up. They've done a great job with their next man up. They still beat Illinois State without them. And, and you know, 
other teams are winning without some of their best players at different times. Greg, I thought starting Christian Williams had the intended effect today. He came out and started very well, and obviously his defense has been good through, through conference play. Um, how did you feel about the effect that he had? You, you get what you want there because, you know, with Coop, Tyreek, and JB, you're, you're wondering about your matchups. Who's guarding who? With Christian, it's easy. He's guarding the best offensive player. And can usually do a pretty darn good job against him. You know, he's probably not going to give it they normally get. So he was he was good. He turned it over a couple times with being not being as careful with the ball. But I'm really comfortable with him when he's healthy. Um, he's got a high basketball IQ. He can really guard. He's basically a point guard at six seven, so he can help facilitate. So JB doesn't have to have the ball in his, his hands all the time. So yeah, I mean, I was pretty. As a staff, we wanted to do that a while back anyway. But with his hips, you know, he hasn't he doesn't practice all the time. Um, and Coop's been doing a good job. And we gotta have we gotta get Coop going. We gotta get the other guys off the bench going. You said after Wednesday's game that you thought uh, Jake Laravia and Trey Williams looked like freshmen in that game on the Royal uh, Jake Laravia didn't look like a freshman today. He looked a lot more assertive. He hit his free throws. Uh, what was the difference for him today? He's good. I mean, you know, he's a confident guy. Um, he's been exposed a little bit on the defensive end, as you know, with some of the teams that we've been playing going at him. He takes that personal, personally, and wants to come at and go at them, just like he wants to be able to guard them. Uh, super competitive. Uh, obviously, we go to him on the offensive end. That's a hard p position in this league to guard. Uh, because those guys are light guards a lot of times. And they had Henry down in there who's a super athletic and he's a load around the basket. So he had to guard kind of more like a, a, a real interior guy. So he was great. And you know, they're, they're going to be like freshmen sometime. And you talk about Loyola, well, nobody's guarding Crubway. I mean, you're just, it's just, it's just a, that's a lot to ask Trey or anybody to do. So we're confident in these guys, we're comfortable with these guys. Um, and you know, moving forward, I think they're just going to continue with Anything else for Coach? Coach, when we were in St. Louis, obviously before the season started, the mentality of the team was something that you and I talked about as far as getting over that hump. Two tough road losses, you give up the lead in the first half, you come out in the second half. That mentality really seemed to kind of shift. These guys mentally look a lot stronger than the teams you've had the past few years. Talk a lot about it. You know, we have to, and you guys don't want to, you know, you talk about toughness. Guys don't want to, you know, they all think they're tough. But it, being mentally tough, you know, in, in adverse conditions, whether you're on the road or at home, when you're not playing as well as you need to, that's when you really need to pull together as a team and just keep fighting. And I thought we grew up a little bit with that in the second half. We talk a lot about it. I know the guys want to, um, but you got to make it happen. You know, you get, you're, there's got to be a, a big time sense of urgency on being able to come together in tough times to get things done. And I thought we, we gutted it out pretty good today. Anything else? Coach, thank you. Appreciate you.